A forthcoming Ice Age is on the horizon. And it's not Milankovic delivering this warning, but rather a broader perspective. Glacial retreat, the blossoming of Greenland with flowers, the vanishing Arctic ice, and the ascent of sea levels. This litany has become a daily fixture in our lives for years. With everyone echoing the same sentiment, it seems only logical to embrace it. However, a minority persists in asserting that the human-induced origin of global warming is no more than an unverified hypothesis derived solely from intricate computer programs known as general circulation models. Contrary to this, the scientific literature increasingly emphasizes the existence of natural climate variability that eludes replication by these models. This natural variability, spanning back to 1850, significantly contributes to the observed global warming. Hence, the ascribed anthropogenic responsibility for the climate changes witnessed in the past century is unduly magnified, rendering the catastrophic predictions unrealistic. The climate, as the most intricate system in our planet, demands approaches that align with its complexity. According to the minority of climate change skeptics, Climate simulation models falter in reproducing observed natural climate variability, notably struggling to reconstruct warm periods spanning the last 10,000 years. These epochs, occurring approximately every thousand years and encompassing well-known periods like the medieval warm period and the Roman warm period, were generally warmer than the present despite lower CO2 concentrations, attributed to millennial cycles of solar activity. The question emerges, whom should we heed? Should we delve into the discussion? Those prophesying imminent climate catastrophe might do well to confine their claims to the possible extinction of the human species rather than predicting the demise of the entire planet and its biodiversity. Earth, existing for around 4.5 billion years, has weathered climate changes of such magnitude that the current one, assuming its reality, appears akin to a microscopic fly's bite in comparison. The notion of Earth perishing or falling ill due to human activities is a fallacy. We must not delude ourselves. Despite our perception of power and invincibility, we are insignificantly subject to natural phenomena to which our presence holds minimal significance. Reflecting on the grand evolution of dinosaurs who thrived for approximately 180 million years, only to face devastation from a mere 10 kilometer diameter asteroid underscores our vulnerability. A more catastrophic scenario would unfold with the standard explosion of a giant star not too distant from our sun. Contrary to notions of Earth's demise or ailment, it continues its incredibly adventurous existence, never identical to itself and prepared, if necessary, to nurture life once again a feat it has accomplished multiple times in the past. The Earth's recent history reveals cycles of significant fluctuations in average global temperature, exemplified by glaciations occurring approximately every 100,000 years. Between these glaciations and even during them, noteworthy short-term variations have persisted, capable of entirely reshaping the conditions for sustaining life. Until about 10,000 years ago, Glaciations affected Europe at the intervals within the overarching 100,000-year cycle. Fundamentally, our lives are intertwined with cycles, sequential repetitions of events. Our world and the universe host hundreds of diverse cycles, each following a specific order. Various cycles shape our world, some rooted in nature, such as seasonal changes, annual animal migrations, and the circadian rhythms governing our sleep patterns. Others of human origin include the planting and harvesting of crops, musical rhythms, and economic cycles. The alternation between glaciations and thawing on Earth finds its explanation in the early 20th century, thanks to the work of Serbian mathematician Milutin Milakovic. His studies led him to the conviction that the entire cycle of major glaciations spanning millions of years could be elucidated by recognizing that the Sun, Earth, and other planets do not move like perfect billiard balls in perpetually identical orbits or rotations. In the universe, 
everything is in a constant state of becoming. Presently, Earth's orbital path is nearly circular, with an eccentricity of around 0.0167. However, this nearly implies that the difference between aphelion and perihelion is roughly 5 million kilometers. Beyond this, in a 92,000 year cycle, Earth's orbit eccentricity can vary up to 0.058 due to the gravitational interactions with other planets, resulting in a difference between aphelion and perihelion extending up to 17 million kilometers. Another significant variation involves the tilt of Earth's rotation axis to the plane of the ecliptic currently at 23.4 degrees, oscillating from 22.5 to 24.5 degrees in approximately 41,000 years. The third major variation relates to the orientation of the axis, influenced by the phenomenon known as the precession of the equinoxes. This phenomenon results in the gradual shifting of the equinox line over time, rotating clockwise and completing a full 360-degree cycle in about 25,800 years. As a consequence, Earth assumes opposite inclinations about every 12,900 years concerning the direction of fixed stars. Before we delve further, make sure to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already and hit the notification bell to stay updated on our daily videos. These astronomical cycles play a crucial role in influencing the amount of solar energy that reaches Earth during different seasons and latitudes. When Earth's axis is more inclined, the temperature differences between seasons become more pronounced, whereas a less inclined axis results in more uniform seasons. Additionally, orbital eccentricity introduces variations in the total amount of solar energy Earth receives throughout the year. The combined effects of these cycles can bring about significant changes in Earth's climate. When the variations synchronize in a way that solar energy is concentrated in the northern hemisphere during summer months, warmer periods known as interglacial periods can occur. During these times, glaciers retreat and sea levels rise. Conversely, when variations lead to reduced solar energy in the northern regions, glacial periods can take place, marked by extensive ice coverage and lowered sea levels. In understanding this, it is crucial to recognize that the alternation between glacial and interglacial periods is dictated by seemingly minor temperature variations. Consider that the average temperature during a glacial period is only 4 to 6 degrees lower than the average temperature during an interglacial period. However, the observable effects are remarkably striking. During glacial periods, Earth becomes inhospitable, with thick ice sheets akin to those at the poles today extending over vast regions of the hemispheres, covering substantial portions of North America Europe, Asia, and South America. With a substantial amount of water locked in glaciers, sea levels experience a significant decrease. For example, during the last glacial period, it is estimated that the average sea level dropped by approximately 120 meters, transforming the Baltic Sea into a lake and turning the United Kingdom into a peninsula inhabited by mammoths and massive hairy rhinoceroses. Contrastingly, during interglacial periods like the present one, the climate becomes considerably milder. Northern Europe largely frees itself from ice and sea levels rise. The connection between Milankovitch cycles and Earth's climate has been substantiated through the analysis of climatic data and geological evidence. Information from ice layers, marine sediments, and carbonate deposits in caves provides valuable insights into climate variation over millennia which can be correlated with astronomical cycles. Over the past two decades, Milankovitch's theory has emerged as the ultimate stronghold against the thesis of global warming attributed to human activity. Admittedly, with limited success, Milankovitch's cycles, while absolutely proven, can only account for long-term climatic changes associated with major glaciations and interspersed periods spanning thousands of years. Consequently, advocates of human-induced climate change, emphasizing rapid warming over a few decades, have found it relatively easy to counter arguments from deniers. However, 
before concluding that there haven't been episodes of climatic changes occurring over a few decades in the past, a fundamental assumption of the thesis of warming caused by human activity must be scrutinized. What climatic changes could the presence of medieval or even Neolithic humans have triggered? The choice of these historical periods is not arbitrary. Consider the so-called Iceman or Oetzi, who lived 5,000 years ago, discovered mummified in 1991 amidst the thawing ice of the Italian Alps at an altitude of around 3,200 meters. What was Oetzi? A hunter? A shepherd? It's challenging to determine. However, it's improbable that he was a mountaineer climbing to those altitudes. Reflect on this. 10,000 years ago, the Alps were still covered in ice amid a glaciation. Yet, just a few centuries later, there was a Neolithic villager already at 3,200 meters altitude, pursued by someone who managed to kill him with an arrow in the back. It's difficult to fathom that Otzi lost his life in the snow and ice, and indeed, there's something perplexing about this story. It's much more plausible that Otzi closed his eyes forever in an environment where a sudden warming period had already cleared altitudes of snow. By 3000 BC, a significant thaw had occurred, enabling people to move freely from Austria to Italy at very high altitudes a thaw larger than today's and occurring in a remarkably short time. Blaming humans for such climatic variations? That seems hard to believe, doesn't it? Moreover, how do we explain the subsequent rapid drop in temperatures that covered Otzi's remains with ice until our days? Contrary to the notion that short-term climate variations don't exist, Earth's entire history is filled with them, all occurring entirely naturally without the influence or blame of human beings. Similar episodes have repeated themselves even in periods closer to our own. Consider the sudden war period from 1000 to 1300, enabling Viking Eric the Red to colonize Greenland and discover America. Or the cold period from 1645 to 1715 known as the Maunder Minimum, disrupting Europe and the entire Northern Hemisphere. Presently, we are in a phase of modest warming, although few may remember that in the 1970s, discussions centered around the impending unbearable cold about to descend upon the Earth, with even considerations of covering the North Pole with coal dust. Despite this, catastrophists increasingly convinced and having gained the favor of the media and politics, anticipate an impending Armageddon due to human activity. On the contrary, the sun has indeed been experiencing a low level of sunspot activity for some years now, almost vanishing, reminiscent of the Maunder Minimum that ushered in 70 years of intense cold between the 17th and 18th centuries. Some scientists posit that this could be the onset of a periodic solar event known as the Grand Minimum, while others contend that there's insufficient evidence to support such a perspective. During a Grand Minimum, Solar magnetism diminishes, sunspots become rare, and less ultraviolet radiation reaches Earth, with the potential for these minima to persist for several decades to centuries, akin to the Maunder Minimum. In essence, confusion prevails, even as descendants of Al Gore assert their position a priori. To summarize and clarify our thoughts, the situation between the two factions can be characterized as follows. Milankovitch's astronomical cycles elucidate long-term climate changes adeptly, but fall short in explaining short-term ones. Proponents of global warming argue that changes as swift as we are experiencing now have never occurred before, attributing the phenomenon to fossil fuel usage. Climate change skeptics counterbalance the argument by presenting evidence of equally rapid climate changes occurring in periods when human activity couldn't have influenced the environment. Amidst this debate, factors like volcanic activity and continental drift have been considered. However, catastrophists often dismiss these factors, erroneously asserting that there haven't been eruptions violent enough in the last 50 years or neglecting the slow pace of continental drift. Surprisingly, amidst all this discourse, there's a notable absence of consideration for the only true energy source of the entire solar system, the sun. 
Catastrophists entangled in complex mathematical models acknowledge the sun's influence but underestimate its role to a mere 7.5%, attributing short periods of warmth and cold recorded over the past 2,000 years to other causes. On the other hand, climate change skeptics heavily rely on Milankovitch's cycles for their arguments, which aptly explain long-term variations but fall short in accounting for changes in the sun's luminosity. In reality, the sun doesn't consistently shine at the same level of luminosity, but slightly dims or brightens about 0.1% during an approximately 11-year cycle. Throughout this period, the sun undergoes various changes in its activity and appearance, leading to fluctuations in solar radiation levels, the amounts of materials emitted into space, and the size and number of sunspots and solar flares. The fluctuations in solar activity impacting space, Earth's atmosphere, and the Earth's surface have diverse effects. Historically, the scientific community lacked conclusive evidence of a direct connection between solar variability and climatic changes. However, a recent study from the National Center for Atmospheric Research marks a significant development, revealing a correlation between the end of solar cycles and the periodic meteorological phenomenon on Earth, the transition from El Niño to La Niña. This transition signifies the atmospheric shift from warming, which is known as El Niño, to cooling, which is La Niña, of the waters in the central eastern Pacific Ocean. The study suggests a guiding role of solar variability in the meteorological changes within Earth's system. This newfound connection between solar cycles and ocean currents offer a potential explanation for the recent peak in warming observed in recent years, possibly mitigating, at least in part, the impact of anthropogenic activities. However, the battle over the understanding of climate change continues. The identification of the true enemy remains elusive, and vast interests are at stake. From this, one might derive the disheartening impression that even science has been subjected to commercial interests and has been put up for sale to the highest bidder.